Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and it's quickly approaching by the way, that transfer deadline, it's looming. Friday night, 11pm, the window slams shut. And I for one, I'm nervous for the next couple of days. Will Celtic get their business done? <laughs> that remains to be seen. But amongst all of that, I think it's blinded some of us. It's made us forget that it's a huge weekend for Celtic. Not only is it transfer deadline day, but tomorrow is the Champions League draw. And on Sunday, we play Rangers. That happens. Don't know if it escaped your mind, because it certainly escaped mine. Too much talk about transfers. We're going to try and cover a little bit of everything today. Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. Welcome back. Let's talk about it all. Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. We're almost at 46,000 subscribers, so thank you all very much. It feels like it was yesterday we hit 45k, we're about to hit 46 already. So go down below, hit both those buttons if you haven't. It's absolutely free. We've got a lot to talk about today. It's the last video I'll be making here um, before I jet off to Berlin. So aye, I want to try and cover it all. Transfer news, Champions League talk, the lot. <sighs> Stay with me. We'll do this. Why don't we start with transfer deadline day and the deals that we're waiting for Celtic to complete. I feel like it's just natural order at this point to get that done and out of the way. Then we can shed some more light on the Champions League draw tomorrow. Celtic officially announced Alex Bally as a Celtic player this morning. The statement was put up by the club on Twitter that they were delighted to confirm the signing of Spanish fullback, fullback Alex Bally on a season-long loan from Barcelona. The statement goes on to say that Celtic are delighted to announce him, subject to international clearance of course. He joined Barcelona a decade ago when he was part of Barca's famed La Masia Youth Academy and started playing for Barcelona B in 2022. After a six-month loan spell at Andorra, he played last on loan at Levante. Uh, so there you go. He is here officially. You can go and check out his interviews and all the rest of it on Celtic TV. There are clips on the social media channels. It looks as though he will be Greg Taylor's competitor for the left-back position this season. I'm glad we've got someone through the door. I've spoke about him already quite a bit on this channel. You can go and check videos and live streams from the last few days to hear all my opinion, but I think he's a very exciting player. I think that he'll be uh, someone to watch with a keen eye, considering he's so young and coming from such a famed youth setup with Barcelona. So I, I'm 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 pretty pretty optimistic, I would say, with Alex Bally. A lot of people getting down about it, saying he's not going to be good enough. Listen. Uh, you've got to be a good footballer to make it to 20 years old at Barcelona. Uh, if you're not good enough, you're cut long before that. I made this point yesterday. So yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does. I doubt that he'll start on Sunday against Rangers. I don't think Rodgers will give him that baptism of fire. Hopefully we might see him come off the bench. But Greg Taylor's played consistently well to start off this season. I don't see him being dropped. Anyway, Alex Bally is here. There is that uh, two and a half, or sorry, that three million euros release clause in his contract that Celtic could trigger this time next year to sign him permanently. But we'll see how he does on the loan deal. The, the main point and the most important thing is we have another left back in. Thank God. Brendan Rodgers made these comments about the player. He said that Alex has been brought up in a really high quality footballing environment, learning all the good habits and skills associated with any top team. He is a player with tremendous attributes. He's performed really well for Levante last season and been around Barcelona's first team this year already. He is welcome and quality addition to our squad. So the manager's happy, which means I'm happy. You should be happy. Get behind the player. Don't moan. I'm telling you, it'll be good. Just wait. I hope. We need to talk about Arne Engels. He is the topic of conversation online today. We all know that Celtic want him, that Brendan Rodgers wants him. But will we get him? Because some people are losing the rag a wee bit at Augsburg's manager's comments today saying that he is intending on having him here for their next fixture on Sunday. Anthony Joseph reported yesterday, of course, that Celtic were ready to submit an improved offer of £9 million for Augsburg midfielder Arne Engels after Augsburg rejected the first offer of £6.5 million. They aren't keen to sell, however, Celtic are pushing for a deal and Brendan Rodgers is very keen to sign the player. Talks will 
continue. Uh, it's been reported by a number of different outlets and publications that Augsburg are looking for closer to £11 million for the player. That was uh, the news that seemed to be doing the rounds yesterday. So Celtic have submitted a new bid of £9 million apparently and uh, they want closer to eleven. However, it's the manager's comments that have people pessimistic towards us signing Arne Engels. So when asked about it, Augsburg manager Yes Torup said this. He says he thinks that he will still be in the squad for the game on Sunday, which is against Heidenheim in the Bundesliga. He's heard about the rumours, but he doesn't know what will happen in the last couple of days. A lot of people taking this automatically as a, a big no, it's not happening. He thinks he'll still be in the squad by Sunday, deadlines and Friday. It means he's not coming here. When did when did we ever jump to these conclusions? Brendan Rodgers spoke to the media uh, on Friday before we played St Mirren and he said Matt O'Reilly will be uh, in the squad. Saturday was in Brighton. Um, funnily enough, the manager, yes, Torup, shares the name as Johannes Hoff Torup, manager of Norwich, who said Adam Ida will be in the squads for Norwich. He's a Celtic player. These are generic comments made by managers in these sort of situations. It's not telling as to what's going to happen whatsoever. That doesn't mean that I'm saying he's definitely coming here either, but I'm just saying that this comment doesn't throw me in any specific direction. It doesn't make me think he's not coming. It doesn't make me think he is coming. I totally write off these sorts of uh, comments from managers. They are trained, they are media trained to lie through their teeth. Um, we've heard Ange Postecoglou and Brendan Rodgers say to our face that they aren't leaving Celtic. A week later they've left Celtic. We know what lies are like now. Um, so yeah, listen, it doesn't mean much. Don't read into it. He doesn't want to sell as one of his best players. Obviously, he's reluctant to sell. He wants to keep his best squad. But uh, if Celtic get close to that 11 million that Augsburg are looking for... I think they might, might need to sell. There's no denying I think this will get tricky in the next couple of days, especially because Augsburg are going to have to replace them ultimately. So there's a couple of days for them to do business, which isn't easy. Um, so this will be tricky. Uh, just watch where it goes, see what happens with it. I'll be away to Berlin. I'll be in Germany when this happens, probably. But I'll try my best to keep you updated if and when I can. Um, but yeah, hopefully it gets done. As I said, I have a good feeling he will be here, but don't want to count count myself, uh, all my chickens too early, you know. So that's two of the four players that we wanted to sign before the deadline discussed. One of them is here, uh, and Alex Bally, the other, on the angles. We're waiting to see what happens. Here's a quick update on the other two, because these are the four prominent names. Matthias Bogus, the situation with him right now is that the bid is below the, the, the valuation of the player. Talks are still ongoing, but he has travelled with LAFC for their next game. He's been on the club's flight. He's in fully intending on being in the uh, the squad for that game against Seattle Sounders, I believe. So, yeah, that one's going to be tricky as well to get done in time by Friday's deadline, but talks are still ongoing. Austin Trusty, we heard that we submitted a £5 million bid for him yesterday. The rumours right now at time of recording is that bid has been rejected. I'm not stunned. I said this yesterday. I said the first bid will get rejected. Go back and watch it. I said I have a feeling it will be rejected. Apparently it has been rejected. Celtic will need to go back in with an improved offer. I think it's going to maybe take closer to 7 million to get that one done and over the line. So, yeah, right now, very quick rundown. Bally is here. Valley, Bally, Bally, Bally B. He's here. Um, Matthias Bogus, talks are still ongoing, but we're under valuation. Austin Trusty, first bid rejected, under valuation. Arnie Engels, bid rejected, under valuation. Celtic are low balling, surprise, surprise. That's all you need to know for now, but I'm hoping we can have the rest of these players, the three other players signed by Friday. Please, just do it. So to finish off today, we need to talk about it because we barely have, and usually every year I would do a full breakdown preview video for the Champions League draw, detailing our best and worst case scenarios, everything else and I've not got the chance to this year because everything just feels like it's so early. Uh, usually we have the transfer deadline and then another week until the Champions League draw. This year not the case. We have the Champions League draw tomorrow, deadline day, on Friday. So I've not had the chance to go in in depth in the same way I usually would. Um, but it's tomorrow. 
Hooray! New, new season, new format. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to these changes. If you don't know the new format by now, you're, you're just going to have to learn as you go because I've spoke about it umpteen times. I've seen Hamish talk about it umpteen times on his channel. I've seen Celtic blogs report on it umpteen times on social media and their websites. You should know how it works by now. Very, very quickly. The draw is tomorrow night at 5pm. You can watch it on UEFA.com. You can watch it on BBC iPlayer and you can watch it on TNT Sports. Those are the three locations. It starts at five. Be there or be square. And essentially, Celtic will draw eight unique opponents rather than the three we'd usually get. It's no longer the four-team groups. It's a 36-team league phase where you play one opponent eight, eight different times. So, uh, sorry, eight opponents on one different occasion. <laughs> I'm confusing myself now. You should know how it works. Let's have a look at this one I drew up earlier. So here is the UEFA Champions League draw simulator, which is very, very good, I will say. It's basically as realistic as you can get. This is essentially every team that's going to be in the competition. Now, it could change. There is qualifiers that yet have to finalise results tonight, but essentially this is what you're probably looking at for the Champions League, and a lot of teams here who are very, very, very good. Celtic ranked above uh, a few teams, including Slovan Bratislava, Monaco, Sparta, Prague, Aston Villa, Bologna, Girona, Stuttgart, Sturm, and uh, Brest of France. Still teams who I think could give Celtic a good game and probably beat us, to be honest, but anyway, this is all the teams, and uh, we can play each of these teams because you can draw two from each pot. So essentially, if you look at pot A, which I believe might be the top eight sides here, if you, you can technically get Real Madrid and Manchester City, you'll play one at home, one away. Pot two, you could get Atalanta and Arsenal, you'd play one at home, one away. Same for pot three, same for pot four. It's all very straightforward. I hope you can understand what I'm saying. So, on this... I have done the simulation which has given Celtic their draw and the numbers should indicate who they're playing on what match day. But for example, if we want to run through here, you can see Celtic have got Bayern Munich on match day two. They've got AC Milan on match day six. They've got Dinamo Zagreb on match day seven and, and uh, Brest of France on match day three. Not too bad. And then the other games, match day five, they would play Liverpool. Match day one, Leverkusen. Match day eight, Young Boys and match day four, Sparta Prague. That is a simulation. That is technically what can happen. As you can see, all from different nations. We've got some Czech, we've got some French, we've got some English, we've got some German. It's no longer the way that it used to be. And uh, if you look at the schedule that is displayed, there you go. Match day one, Celtic would play Leverkusen at home. Match day two, they would play Bayern away. Match day three, Brest away. Match day four, Sparta at home. That's essentially what you're going to get. It's not the same process Process where the balls are drawn out of the hat. A computer is going to display uh, a matrix similar to the one we looked at in screen a moment ago, like this, and then we'll get the nice tidy match day schedules. Simple as that. What do you make of my draw? This is this. is I'm not doing best and worst case scenario this year because I still don't fully understand how it could possibly work. Um... But how would you think about that? What about those eight teams? Uh, Leverkusen, Bayern, Brest, Sparta, uh, Liverpool, Milan, Zagreb, and Young Boys. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's that bad. Then again, I would want to avoid you know, Leverkusen and Liverpool. Yeah, I don't want them. By the time the group stage is over, or the league phase, I should call it, is over, the top eight teams will automatically go through to the last 16. And then the 16 sides following that, between ninth place and, can't even bother doing the math, they will go into a playoff round where the eight winners will join those eight guaranteed last 16 sides. So, yeah, you're, you're talking quite confusing with all the numbers, I know, but... I hope you understand that Champions League draw tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll have a reaction live from Berlin. We'll soon see. Right, that does it. Like and subscribe. I to go. I've got other things to make and do and all the rest of it before I jet off. So, uh, thank you for joining me. We should hopefully have some videos while I'm in Berlin. We've got a podcast recording tonight anyway. So, yeah. Thank you. God bless. See you all next time.